with a former WCW and WWE star facing 15 charges, Maria Kanellis on WWE punishing her for getting pregnant, and John Cena apologizing to China. This is Wrestling Up. My name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report for May 25th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Up and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. While WWE has been home to some great entrance themes, these days a good entrance song is hard to come by in the company, as Booker T was critical of this on his Hall of Fame podcast. I don't think WWE concentrates enough on that one thing. You know what, I don't think it's because they're not, you know, thinking about it more than anything. These are just my thoughts and my concepts, but my thing is, the entrance music, there should be more thought put into the entrance music because that music has to have the fans feel a certain way. It's not just for the wrestler to walk out to, and I think that's what's not thought about as much. Just like for instance, when I heard Stone Cold Steve Austin's music in the glass break, that could have been, of course Steve Austin took it and ran with it, and took it all the way to the hilt. But that entrance could have been for many different guys. That entrance and theme probably could have got over just about every guy that had that alone. Prior to being released from WWE, Maria Kanellis touched on her second pregnancy, the focal point of an on-screen storyline, as she feels the company centered the attention around her being pregnant as punishment, saying this on the Rossing show. There are several falsehoods with that. First and foremost, I didn't know I was pregnant when I signed with WWE, so I couldn't have told them. When I came out with the fact that I was pregnant on live TV, I was probably only about eight and a half to nine weeks pregnant, so like I did not know when I signed. Also, I had talked to WWE about having another baby because when we were in contract negotiations, I gave them two different options. I was like, okay, you guys can either sign me to like a legacy paid per appearance deal, which is less money, less appearances, and you can just keep me under contract and I will have a baby and I'll do less because I was going to get pregnant. Or you can sign me to the full-time deal, but I'm planning on having another baby and I'm getting to be almost 40, so it's going to happen soon. They didn't accept that option. What they decided to do was bring me in full-time, full-talent contract and that was their decision, not mine. I gave them the other options so if it was a way of getting back at me, I'm sorry that talent relations didn't inform WWE of what our family planning was, but at the end of the day, it really is none of their business. If anything, pregnancy is a disability in the US. It's considered disability, so federally it should be treated as an injury in an independent contract, so that doesn't matter at the end of the day. I didn't have to tell them what my family planning was, but I did. WWE could have chosen to fire me. They could have signed me to a paid per appearance deal, a lesser contract, a producer writer deal, or even working down on NXT or they could have signed me to a full-time deal. They chose to sign me to a full-time deal. So whether or not the information was relayed from talent relations to Vince McMahon or the management, I don't know. Maybe it was a punishment, but at the same time, like that's not my fault. The pair are now working for Ring of Honor, where they will hopefully continue to have a good run. It appears there is more to come in terms of WWE releases with Fightful writing, unfortunately hearing there are more backstage layoffs in WWE today. With the likely reason being budget cuts, we'll be sure to keep you posted on this issue. Former WCW star Buff Bagwell has two active cases in Cobb County, Georgia, with the first offense listed as the 16th of August in 2020, where Bagwell crashed his car and had to go to the hospital. As PW Insider noted, he was charged with the following, hit and run, duty of driver to stop at or return to the scene of an accident, falling too closely, failure to yield when entering an intersection, speeding, driving within a gore or median or emergency lane, driving on the wrong side of the roadway, duty upon striking a fixed object, driving under the influence of drugs, and reckless driving. According to the announcement from the 18th of August in 2020, Bagwell was driving a 2013 Chevy Tahoe while driving west on Cumberland Boulevard towards Cumberland Parkway in Cobb County on Sunday 816. Around 518, Bagwell lost control as he followed a curve in the road, striking the center median and a metal fence inside the median before driving towards oncoming traffic on the opposite side of the road. The car then hit the curb before colliding with a freestanding bathroom next to a bus station. Bagwell was transported to Wellstar Kennestone Hospital in Marietta, Georgia with serious 
serious injuries. Investigators believe Bagwell was impaired by prescription medication during the collision. Bagwell suffered a broken right hip, broken ribs, a broken left eye socket, a torn groin, and has lots of bruising from the car wreck. With him set to appear in court on the 22nd of July, the second case stems from an incident three days prior at the intersection of Bells Ferry Road and Santa Fe Trail, with his charges for that case being hit and run, giving false names, falling too closely, license to be carried and exhibited on demand, and an open container violation. Bagwell should face a different judge before the court on the 23rd of July, with him released on the evening of the 22nd, bonding out for $14,000 US dollars between two cases. In a surprising turn of events, WWE is split from their new play-by-play -play commentator for Monday Night Raw with its stated WWE and Adnan Verk have mutually agreed to part ways, WWE thanks Adnan for his work. With no pro wrestling experience prior to joining WWE, Verk only lasted about a month with the company. On a promotional tour for Fast and Furious 9, John Cena, while speaking to TVBS, said Taiwan was the first country to watch the film directed by Taiwanese-American Justin Lin. This led to backlash from China for Cena mistakenly referring to the island as its own nation, with him apologizing, saying, Hi China, I'm John Cena. I'm in the middle of Fast and Furious 9 promotions. I'm doing a lot of interviews. I made a mistake in one of my interviews. Everyone was asking me if I could use Chinese. The staff of the movie gave me a lot of information, so there was a lot of interviews and info. I made one mistake. I have to say something very, very very important now. I love and respect China and Chinese people. I'm very, very sorry about my mistake. I apologize. I'm very sorry. You must understand that I really love, really respect China and the Chinese people. My apologies. See you. Apparently apologizing to China led to more backlash as he looks to continue his work with the upcoming movie. On the Shawn Michaels a &E biography, WWE Chairman Vince McMahon talked about the influence of a backstage group in the company known as The Click, consisting of Michaels, Triple H, X-Pac, Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall. They couldn't call any of the shots, but I listened. They had some really good ideas, really smart individually, and Shawn very smart when he was sober. Shawn had an attitude. When he drank, even more so, on top of pills. Shawn would say the wrong thing at the wrong time, and he was protected in the WWE environment. Triple H revealed that despite his usage of drugs, he stayed beside Michaels, as McMahon claimed HBK owes his life to Triple H. His moment of existence was the 20 minutes in the ring every night. He wouldn't be messed up. He would go in there and kill it every night. Then the minute he was done, he would take a pill. I'm in pain and I took some stuff so I wouldn't be in pain this morning, but I'm not messed up. Why would you hang with this misery 24-7? No, it's not. Again, it's like your brother. It's like a family member. Sean owes his life to Triple H. Paul Levesque owes his life to him. Michaels was able to turn his life around, becoming a born-again Christian and even having a revitalized run in WWE. For his first match following his WWE release, Andrade is set to face El Hijo del Santo on the 12th in Anaheim, with general admission costing 65 US dollars. Andrade is also set to take on Alberto Del Rio on the 31st of July, as well as Kenny Omega at Triple Mania on the 14th of August. Among those fired by WWE today, PW Insider noted, Brian Pelagato had been with WWE for just under nine years, coming over from ESPN as a senior digital producer. He rose through the ranks and was named VP of Digital and Social Media in July of 2015. He took the position of SVP production in March 2019. Sean Ross Sapp would add, there are some HR exit meetings set for this afternoon for many of those who were let go by WWE. There are some high-ranking people in those departments and longtime supervisors among the cuts. PW Insider would state these layoffs are due to a merging of departments, writing one example is that there were two graphics departments, one for WWE TV production and one for digital, and they can easily be merged into one division, meaning the company could get that work done with a smaller group of staffers. Employees in WWE are feeling the threat of release, with PW Insider noting, got a follow-up second out of that inside. Writing one on, as you can imagine, there are a lot of shell-shocked employees, both those who exited today and those who remain knowing they will have more responsibilities to deal with daily. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.